You know, everybody get their turn. Everybody, you know. Everybody get their turn to shine. And everybody gets their turn to be pulled down to the depths of hell with little P. Diddy and Jay-Z demons poking them with bitch boy. I don't hear nobody out there. Hold down. Hold down. Before we get started, guys, I want to thank all of my paying members, okay? When YouTube is not giving what it's supposed to give, the fact that I have uh, my paying members on Patreon and here on YouTube, it kind of makes up for the disparage in income. Okay, because y'all know I'm working and I'm taking care and I'm doing the YouTube. So um, I'm going to ask for those of you who enjoy my reviews or my recaps and you're not yet a paying member. I'm going to humbly ask for you to support me either here on the YouTube or on the Patreon. The link will be below for the Patreon, okay? YouTube, all you have to do is just hit that join button, okay? But your $5 contribution does matter. Piggybacking off of that, all right? I see we're back in a place where people are like, nay, you should do this book. Nay, you should do that book. Okay, respectfully, I, I appreciate my subscribers, I appreciate your likes, I appreciate your respectful comments, but I hold my paying members' opinion of what book I should do next um, higher. My phone was ringing uncontrollably. My experiences in life were a clear picture to me that it was time that I commit to writing an autobiography. I had always wanted to write a book, and now was the perfect time. God was creating new experiences for me to fill my pages. It was amazing. Everything in my surroundings was happening for a reason. In fact, it got to the point where I no longer felt offended. Everything that was happening would be great for the book. Thanks to both SC and Nas, the media pursuit was fascinating. The battle went on for a while, which definitely helped Nas's career and record sales. SC ended up leaving the country on a retreat. Nas left town and went on a promotional tour to promote his new album, Steelmatic. It was time to start looking for my own place. Girl, you got a job? Is it? Uh, okay, I hope somewhere it's a job. I'd had a taste of freedom in Los Angeles and wouldn't be content until I was in my own space. After searching for weeks, I found a three-bedroom townhouse in a family-oriented Long Island community with a great school district and plenty of parks and beaches. I loved it, but wasn't sure destiny would. Nice as it was, the townhouse was no mansion. Certainly no place for indoor roller skating. From here on out, destiny and I would comprise our family unit. So I needed her okay. We went to see it after school. Mommy, this is beautiful. Can we move in now? Are we going to take it? She ran upstairs and picked out her bedroom and designated the basement her playroom. With Destiny's approval, I signed the lease. We moved in February 2002. Now, this is a bit strange to me because who was allowing her to sign a lease with no job? What is your income? Your child support? Okay. Nas sold the mansion and relocated to New York City, taking Mrs. Jones with him. I suggested Nas move Mrs. Jones into his Atlanta home, but he claimed the house needed a few repairs before it would be livable and instead rented a two-bedroom apartment on the Upper East Side, large enough for both of them. While Nas was on the road, Destiny and I kept 
Mrs. Jones' company. Mrs. Jones found such pleasure in destiny, her little sunshine, and said that destiny was the cute, articulate little girl she'd always wanted. As winter gave way to spring, Mrs. Jones' health worsened. Yet she and I bonded like never before. She confided her aspiration to start a jewelry business and a merchandising company for Nas. Above all, she wanted to live in a house and dreamed about a move down south where she also had relatives. His mother's condition was Nas's number one concern, but there was so much going on around him. His career had resurrected. He was working hard, and I could tell that all of the SC controversy was still bothering him. It was a lot for one person to deal with, and like most men, Nas channeled his thoughts and emotions into work. Destiny and I were visiting Mrs. Jones at the hospital every day. Nas came through when he could, which wasn't too often because he was touring. That also was the case with Jabari. Unfortunately, they were the only ones who could make decisions on their mother's behalf, so their absence made things difficult. Soon, Mrs. Jones passed away. Destiny took it hard, very hard. It would be a long time before she'd be able to say her grandma's name without crying. After the wake, I called to check on Nas, thinking he and Destiny might benefit from spending some time together. But Nas was too busy, he said. He was up in Spanish Harlem filming the video for J-Lo's single, I'm Gonna Be All Right. Destiny and I were not invited to the funeral service, which was held the following day in North Carolina. So my sister Nene and I worked to distract Destiny, and little by little, we convinced her that she would be okay. The months were rolling by. Nas was working on a new album and really feeling himself. During a live radio interview, Nas made a comment about Cameron's current album at the time. Come home with me. He said it was trash and that Cameron should change his name from Cameron to Can't Rhyme. Cam retaliated with Killer's Revenge. Here we go again, I thought. And I will say this, there was a lot of money being made over this beef. During it, before it, after it. Right. People are still cursing yeah. Because Rockefeller went on to do a bunch of other songs where other members jumped on and mm -hmm. Cameron was on a song and Freeway was on a song. Cameron, mm -hmm. Uh, and so forth. Uh, all this was happening. You got something to say about camera? I, you know what? I have no respect for camera. I think he's a total douchebag. Honestly, I don't even want to talk about him. Wait a minute. He had, ah, right, because Cameron had the verse about your daughter. I'm, honestly, I was referring to what he said about Nas' mom, who had passed away. He made very disparaging comments about her. Um, what he said about Destiny and I, I was like, oh, you clown. Monkey see, monkey do. I couldn't care about. He said, like, R. Kelly, your daughter's face, or something like that? I don't remember exactly what he said, but he had some really negative things to say. Cameron's a clown. He's a douchebag. He's disgusting. He's, he's, he's illiterate, and he can't rhyme to save his life. And um, he's not even worth me talking about, to be honest with you. Well, he, he actually didn't actually have anything to do with this beef. He just was on Rockefeller. Let me tell you something. Cameron been a Nas dick rider from junk. Cameron always sweating Nas. Cameron used to try to get into my girl circles just to get close to Nas. That's how desperate and pathetic he was. Right. He said, tell your daughter R. Kelly had my way with her face. And how old is he, was your daughter at the time? She was, she, I mean, she had to be like seven or eight years old at that time. You know, yeah, somebody, that's, that's way over the line. Yeah, somebody should have stomped him out immediately. After that, well, I know for a fact that when he got on the radio and was spewing this bullshit, the studio I was in, the whole entire studio jumped in their cars and ran to the city. But he was gone by that time. Um, it can't. Right, can't he called. Can Cameron call Nas's dead mother a, a whipwop head? Something like so he said something about her wig or or something to that effect. I believe, but but I'll be honest with you, I was totally. Um, 
fulfilled when 50 destroyed when 50 destroyed Cameron I was like okay I feel I feel so much better like that, like I was fine after that like you know okay the months were rolling by. Nas was working on a new album and really feeling himself. During a live radio interview, Nas made a comment about Cameron's current album at the time, Come Home With Me. He said it was trash and that Cameron should change his name from Cameron to Can't Run. Cam retaliated with Killer's Revenge. Here we go again, I thought. Although Nas was completely out of line for making that comment about Cameron's album, I couldn't understand why Cam came after me in Destiny. Tell your daughter, Robert slash have my way with her ace were the lyrics that enraged me and had me on a verbal rampage. Cam also displayed poor taste when he talked disrespectfully about Mrs. Jones, whom we had just lost. I was even more surprised that Hot 97 supported the song. Say what you feel like about me, but leave my child out of it. Then I received a call from a good friend, Charles Fisher, who worked with the Hip Hop Summit. He asked if Nas, Destiny, and I would be interested in attending a sit-down with Cameron and a few executives from Def Jam during Russell's, including Russell Simmons. He another one of them ninjas. It's Puffy, it's Russell Simmons, and it's Jay-Z. He's another one of them ones that got the bull snit with them. You know, everybody get their turn, everybody, you know? Everybody get their turn to shine, and everybody gets their turn to be pulled down to the depths of hell with little P. Diddy and Jay-Z demons poking them with pitchforks. Hey. Ah.